So I just caught this monarch uh, nectaring on this Joe Pye weed. Um, and a lot of butterflies, people are afraid to handle them because you've always been told, you know, you'll rub the scales off on your fingers. And some of the smaller butterflies, that's indeed true, you'll get these fine little scales rubbed off on their wings, which is not good for them. But monarchs, because they migrate so far, they have very strong wings and scales. And I can handle this butterfly very gently, and you can virtually see I, I really have no scales on my finger. So you can handle them by the edges like this, no problem. Um, this monarch is hopefully going to make it to Mexico. And if we open them up, we can see that if we can get the shot in here tight without hurting them, we're going to see that indeed this, see that little dot right here, right there on the vein? This is actually a male. And he's got really skinny veins too. So hopefully this male is going to make it to Mexico. In order for us to figure that out, we're actually going to tag him with these little tags that you can get yourself from Monarch Watch for just a few dollars. Anyone can order them from monarchwatch.org and tag monarchs. And it's a great thing to do with kids. I have a lot of fun doing it with kids as young as, oh, even first graders, five, six years old, I can tag monarchs with. They're really just, they're little stickers um, with a really good adhesive on the back that comes from 3M that came up with this adhesive to keep them stuck on the butterflies. And it's so sticky that it's even hard to get off your fingers. But what we want to do is we want to put this right here on the cell, what's this central area on the butterfly. We're just going to stick it right on there, just like a bumper sticker, and pat it down a little bit, and that's it. That's, we've tagged our monarch. Now, if you look closely at it, every monarch tag has a different number on it, sort of like a social security number for this butterfly. So if someone finds it along the way, let's say they find it in Pennsylvania on its way down there, someone could find this in their yard and report the tag to monarchwatch.org. Or, if we're lucky, someone will actually find this in the wintering grounds in Mexico and report it back to us. And, and I've actually had a couple of them return from Mexico from here in Vermont. Um, and that's always been really exciting. But that's taken the tagging of hundreds and hundreds of individuals before actually I, I get one back from Mexico. So we actually have direct evidence from these tags that these guys are going the whole way down to Mexico. And a lot of people ask me, all right, well, how is this little thing going to fly the whole way from Vermont down to Mexico? Now with birds, we know that birds build up a whole lot of fat. They get a whole bunch of fat on their belly and on their chest, and they use that fat as sort of a, a fuel, like, a, like your jet plane. And they burn that fat as they migrate the whole way down south. With monarchs, it's a little bit different. They're actually getting fatter and fatter as they get closer and closer to Mexico. So really, this monarch right here in my hand, he probably weighs the least he's going to weigh ever in his life right now. And as he glides downward, down towards Mexico, he's going to gain more and more weight as he nectars every day, and then just sort of glide along and not use any energy. And that's really important, because when they get to Mexico, they have to have enough fat to sit up high in these fir trees in the mountains of Mexico and just chill out for the whole winter, waiting for spring to come, slowly burning that fat off all winter long, and then migrating back to the Gulf Coast where they will mate, lay eggs, and, and die. And so actually this one in my hand that's gonna to migrate to Mexico is the great, great, great grandson of the monarchs that were in Mexico last winter. So it takes multiple generations to get this done. So once this monarch next spring mates, lays eggs in, in Texas, we're then gonna see him die in his young, We'll, we'll feed in, in down in south in Texas and along the Gulf Coast, wherever he lands and puts eggs, his wife puts eggs. And uh, then those young are going to move further north. And eventually, one or two generations, they'll end up here in Vermont for the summer, next summer. We have two generations up here in the north. And finally, the last generation, you know, three or four generations from this guy, will then migrate back to Mexico. So a great source of more information about butterflies like the monarch is the Audubon Guides Butterfly app. And here we have it on the iPad. It's also available for the iPhone. Um, and it looks about the same except, you know, on the iPad we have a much larger image. And here we see the male that I talked about earlier with the, with the two scent patches. Um, and you can scroll along and see the underside. Um, 
and every species you can scroll through many pictures like this. So the other neat thing both on the iPad and on the iPhone is you can even enlarge the images. So you just hit the little enlarge button, double tap, and we get a nice and large image. And here we can see with the adult, we also have the larva, the caterpillar. And Dan, you were asking earlier about more information. The great thing about this app is that if you click on the description here, there's just tons of information about every species, including the monarch here. Um, and it highlights some of the things I was discussing when I let go of that monarch. Um, how they travel to Mexico, how there's multiple generations to get back here to the north. My favorite thing about these apps is how compact they are. I used to have to carry a couple field guides in my backpack and now all I have to do is carry my iPhone um, with me in the field and with this I could uh, learn my butterflies so much more quickly than I, than I did a few years ago. It has everything here that I need. It's got reference material, it's got all the species and I don't have to thumb through an index um, and pull it out of my backpack. I can just quickly go to the search mechanism and find the butterfly I need. And then there's just multiple pictures there um, for me to look at and figure out if, uh, if that is indeed the butterfly I'm looking at. So now learning your butterflies with these apps has just really become a snap.